Hey folks, how's it going? We're checking out more Red Dwarf. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. Man, last episode was fantastic. Rimmer was acting insane. <laughs> they do an elevator for himself, a hallway with like, a, what do you call it, rolling floors and everything. He's treating everybody like crap. It's just great. Just shows how Rimmer gets when he's given a promotion, when he gets power, man. And I love how I like Crichton will try to give him like <laughs> words of wisdom. If you want to truly test a man's character, give him power or something like that. It was like an Abraham Lincoln quote. I forgot Rimmer's response, but it was like super rude. <laughs> Great. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching Rimmer be a douchebag. The dude even created an entire club full of Rimmer. The dude is out of control, man. That was that was good stuff. I enjoyed watching Rimmer get power and, and watch him lose it as well. But watch him get power is very entertaining. How he dolled up all the elevators and all that stuff. It was just, it was fun to watch. And somebody was saying like how they feel like this would be more like season seven Rimmer. Because by now Rimmer has really grown and everything. And they feel like, it feels like he reverted him to like pre see i think you said pre-season seven rumor or actual season seven rumor i can't quite remember what you said but you did say like you feel like rumor's grown as a character and stuff now and if he rece received the promotion he wouldn't act as petty as he act like maybe he would act a bit petty but not as bad as he did i just i don't know man it's kind of hard to say you might be right but i don't know i just can't put my finger on rumor man because he, he went on the ace rumor mission thing which took a lot of convincing and stuff but that's like that means he's going to always be in danger going on those missions and all that kind of jazz. And he did it. He went out there. Like, like old boy explained to him that, like, every Rimmer didn't start off that way. We become Ace Rimmer and yada, yada, yada. And he saw this field of all these freaking, uh, what do you call it, light bees out there of all the Ace Rimmers that were put to rest that, you know, died in action or whatever. And he went out there and braved it up. And was like, I'm going to be the new Ace Rimmer. I'm going to do it. I'm going to carry on the legacy or whatever. And that takes, like, a lot of guts to do that. And he also, you know, shot the time drive at the end of uh was it season six or season five i can't quite remember so excuse me but i remember like he shot the time drive and i remember saying at the end of the episode that like dude that was so uncharacteristic like what made rumor do that i don't see rumor doing that it just seemed so out of character and people were saying like but somebody said like he always had the ability in him he just needed to be given the opportunity to show his bravery somebody said that and he did he showed his bravery and he did it in that moment but he kind of just reverted back to himself and i remember one of the examples you guys gave was like the the hollow ship that showed that like Rimmer was growing as a person because he gave up his position on that ship for that girl so she could stay on the ship or what have you. I don't remember the full story from that ship, but that was one of the examples you guys gave that Rimmer was willing to do that. And he would never do something like that if he didn't grow as a person. All those things have shown personal growth, you know? But he just always seems to revert back, you know? <laughs> he always seems to just go back to the way he was. So, yeah. I don't know, man. Like I said, you might be, you're probably completely right, man. You're, you're, you're probably absolutely right that he probably shouldn't have been as douchebag as he, he, he was. He's probably grown a lot more as a character than we like to give him credit. He's done a lot of brave things. He's done selfless things like give up that position on the ship and probably a bunch of other things that I'm missing because you guys have said other stuff that I just, I'm just not clicking right now that I can't remember at the moment. So you're probably right. He probably won't be as douchey as he was, but it was entertaining. <laughs> I did enjoy it, so I don't know. Maybe that was the point. Uh, <laughs> just to like show him be a jackass. I don't know, man. But either way, man. Uh, looking forward to this episode. So let's just go to jump into it, folks. We'll talk about it more at the end. Ah. Uh. <laughs> oh, Lister, it's six in the morning. What are you doing? I'm just trimming my big toe with these lawn edge trimmers. Oh. So you finished Kierkegaard's The Concept of Irony, then? You've got an ingrown toenail rim. It's killing me, man. Girl saying Thank dangerous. Thank you for me. <laughs> Tried everything. Scissors, nail file. Why don't you get Crichton to do it for you? Have you seen the size of his hands? They're like space shovels. It'd be like asking Herman Munster for a circumcision. Oh. <laughs> oh, thanks. Speaking of... Breakfast, sir. Right then, six o'clock in the morning. We moved the clocks forward today, sir. And remember last year when it was time to move the clocks forward and he wanted another hour in bed? So you asked if I could move the clocks forward an extra hour the following year instead? Well, we've actually been doing that now for the last seven years. Oh. So in actuality, according to space-adjusted time, it is now two in the afternoon. <laughs> Which means breakfast time. <laughs> I'll just tuck this napkin in for you, sir. Thank there you. There we go. And I'll just fluff this pillow up a bit. Fluff, fluff, fluff. There we go, sir. Is there anything you don't do for him? When he goes to the loo, do you fit a special hand made from three-ply toilet tissue? It's <laughs> an excellent suggestion, sir. I'll make a note. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, great. Um, what for breakfast? Oh, gross. Now, the full list, sir. Ah, the 
But listener. It's a period when people, usually halfway through life, are forced to confront their own mortality. Put it this way. Have you ever felt, I've wasted my life? You? Sure. Every single day. Oh, have you ever felt you've wasted your you life? Waste no, <laughs> waste of space. Have you ever felt there's so much more I could have been? No. <laughs> have you ever felt if I went back in time and had my time again, I'd... Forget it. <laughs> I suppose you can't blame Crichton for feeling like be great he's cat. three million years old, and what has he got to show for it? Mozart was five when he wrote Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Yeah, but what did he do after that, huh? He had a bad case of second nursery rhyme syndrome, right? <laughs> Mozart, dummy, is one of the greatest musical gods of all music. And after Twinkle, he went on to write, among other things, the best of Mozart. <laughs> and the best of Mozart volume two. <laughs> it must be so hard for you being the only one here with a classical education. It is. <laughs> Crichton? Yeah, stay on that high horse, buddy. <laughs> I was wondering why he was red. I should have read in the thumbnail. Talk to yourself. What do you think? It's the <clears throat> new DX87 shell. Carbon fiber, Rosso Corsa red, Alcantara trim with twin exhausts. <laughs> it has a top walking speed of, get this, 12 miles an hour. <laughs> and you should see how this hoochie takes corners. It is spectacular. Plus, with the new pushrod suspension system, allowing my nose to be lower to the ground, I can take corners at 38 degrees. Right. Look, sit down. We want to talk to you. Check this. God wow, bless him. Right, do you know what yeah, a midlife weird. crisis is? Sure, Dooski. It's a period of emotional turmoil in the middle of life. Symptoms are usually unexpected anger, a loss of interest in things once considered important, and a desire to try and recapture your youth. Now, check out these subwoofers. <laughs> you feel that bass? Is that not some serious bump? I feel it, I feel it! I'll go bungee jumping in the lift shaft and mull it over. I wonder why I'm so attracted to bungee jumping all of a sudden. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yes, he's having a full-on midlife crisis. Mm. Next thing he'll be leaving us for a younger crew. <laughs> we need to help him. What do you suggest? A lunar road trip? He said back you know what a midlife crisis was. You've got to show him what he's evolved, how much he's achieved. He hasn't achieved anything because he spends all his time looking after you. Well, get out of town, Rimmer. He's been independent ever since I helped him break his programming. Yes, independent to look after you. <laughs> okay, how about this? Remember years ago that tech we took from the Nova 5? Crichton's old ship? Yeah, didn't they have some special fine fleet software so that the ships could locate each other? So what you're suggesting is we find one of badly damaged parcel heads old ships? We find one with a mech on board, it'll show Crichton how much he's evolved. How long will that take? Well, once the scanners have located a ship to us, it'll be no time at all. Because we'll go into stasis until we get there. <laughs> What's this ship doing out here? Well, according to the mission log, they were looking for a missing research station that was attempting to communicate with the universe. Uh, back in the day, there used to be a theory, now dismissed as preposterous, that the universe was an intelligent entity. Bet you're really looking forward to meeting Butler. He'll probably be unable to lie, won't he, sir? Or cheat, deceive, brag, boast, whinge, exaggerate, or be proud, pompous, or self-important. In fact, he won't be able to do any of the things I've taught you. <laughs> Thinking back, I see now, I've had such a privileged upbringing. Oh, Christ. <laughs> it's going to be like when you discover someone from school is doing really badly. It always gives you that lovely, warm, fuzzy feeling inside. In fact, I've got so a list trash. I carry around in my man purse of all the kids doing worse than me. <laughs> Short list, is it? Derek Smitherton. Hey. He was our head boy. Won every prize going, dated all the best-looking girls, but he ended up as a bald divorcee working in a sewage treatment plant in the Falkland Islands. <laughs> and they say there's no God. Oh, <laughs> uh, basking in somebody else's misery. 
Electro-Ganda engines! They're nothing at all! Incoming! Prepare yourself to die, human ship of scum! Equahecte, is that you? Butler? Julek Kuswagmorak! Ha 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 you two know each other? I'm his daughter's godfather. It was Equahecte's way of thanking me after I helped his sick tribe. My tribe avoid big death when Butler make skin demons flee. My pleasure. And I still treasure the Gelfberry wine you gave me. Best weed killer I've ever had. My Rafflesia Arnold is absolutely love it. <laughs> You're too kind. Equahectes promised to safely escort us back to Red Dwarf. We must thank them. On behalf of all the Red Dwarf crew, let me say... Akach, Magalach, Makin, Magagamach. Actually, Crichton, it's Akaka, Akak, Magaha. Here, say it with me. Ma. Ma. No, it's it's in the throat. Ma. Ma. No, Ma. 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 That's it. Screw all you on the ship. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's quite close. The uh, Sak and Yako dialect's a little trickier to master than the Kinitawawi. Later, I'd be happy to go over it with you. That would be most useful. Oh, I forgot to ask. Equahecte, how is Baknak Nigath? Askikach. <laughs> His father is dying of fever. Oh, do you have a cure, Butler? Well, possibly. It's hard to say without seeing him. Well, then you must go. Go, be gone and go. <laughs> They'll teleport me aboard their ship and then afterwards return me to the Nova 3. I must bid you farewell. And perhaps we could get together sometime soon. I have the Nova 3's handshake frequencies written right here, sir. Good luck, my friends, and may every day bring us each a little more wisdom. He's so pissed. No need, sir. I'm happy to do it. How you doing? I'd just like to have been better than Butler at something. Just one small, tiny, itty-bitty thing. I had a midlife crisis once. You didn't say. Yeah, it was about three years ago. I had all the classic symptoms. First I denied it. Then I got angry. Then I started thinking about missed opportunities. Then I got depressed. And then finally, I accepted it. How long did this whole thing last, sir? About five minutes. <laughs> five of minutes. course, five minutes to him. I just thought, Dave, you're getting older, move on. Just like that. That's how you have a midlife crisis in the North, Kreitz. Bish, bosh, done. <laughs> Don't toss about. I wish I could be the same, sir, but I just can't. Things didn't exactly go to plan back there, did they? It really brought home to me what a wretched failure my whole life has been. But there is several generations before me, and yet he's done so much more with what he's been given. Whoa! What the smack was that? It's the ear boosters, of course! But for the damn fool, he didn't realize that unlike the Nova 3, all our voids have universal linkage. Meaning? The engines are gonna burn out, sir. He'll look out to me stupid. <laughs> Rush! How stupid is he gonna look then? <laughs> And repair? Well, we could, but well, why should we help Butler out? Right. Yeah, help us out. Oh, my jealousy tip's overloading, sir. Return to sane mode. Of course we should land. Where? Anywhere before the whole board is infected. Uh, Hello. How's he gonna ruin this? Is there anyone there? Yes, I am here. <laughs> to whom am I speaking, please? I am the entity known to you as the universe. Ah, Mr. Universe, sir. 
It's not Mr. Universe, Rimmer. That's some geezer with pecs and opposing powers. <laughs> Ask him the meaning of life. Hang on. How can we know for certain that you are indeed the universe? I am the universe. I am everything. I am the entire contents of space. I am all matter and energy. I am time. I am the totality of all existence. Says you. <laughs> but can you prove it? What are you asking for? Really? That's not like a generic <laughs> word of prove it. Photo ID. A spend and save card. Look, mm -hmm. let me take over. Here you go, Crichton. You're up. Sir? All your worries about the big burst, the meaning of life. Now's your chance. Ask the universe. Perhaps you can help, sir. I've been struggling of late to comprehend the point of existence. Explain. Well, if you're going to die in 14 billion years' time, what's the point in anything? Wait, I'm gonna die? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Well, no. Just 14 billion years' time? I'm halfway through my life then. No wonder I'm not as hot as I once was. No wonder I'm expanding exponentially. <laughs> You just sent the universe into a full-on midlife crisis. Oh, shit. Oh, my. <laughs> Halfway through my life. And I've only ever created one lousy, stupid planet with intelligent life. And that's debatable. <laughs> what have I been doing all this time? Making life from nothing is really rather tricky, sir. You've done rather well. Wait. If, if I die and I leave nothing behind, my life has no meaning. And existence is senseless. Ain't that right? No. No? I've been thinking about this. If you created everything in the universe, then you must have created love. And it strikes me that there may be no God and no afterlife, no one knows. But we do know love exists. And if it does, then life has meaning. Let's hear it for the universe. Great job, guy. That's very right, kind. Thank you. I must confess, I feel a whole lot better. So do I. Is there any advice you can give us before we jog on? Yes. What? Triton, take off that suit. It really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what a very strange oh, man. Strange but reassuring. I realize now we're all in the same boat, even the universe. And even though the boat has a hole in it, at least we get to see the sea. Butler, it's Crichton. I'm calling to say hi and thank you for today. <laughs> Not at all. Incidentally, when we left you, we stumbled across a space station. And the most incredible thing, it turned out to be the space station you were looking for. And guess what? We actually talked to the universe, the actual universe itself. What do you make of that? Oh, you know the universe. Oh my God, of course, course he does. Me. You purposely expanded our EM circuit so I'd meet him? You thought it might help me? <laughs> you have him on speed dial? <laughs> oh no, he hates that freaking dude. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I really like when he said, <laughs> he told the universe he's gonna die. I'm gonna die. Oh, dude. Sitting through a whole midlife crisis. The, the freaking universe. That was good. Oh, it's good. I've never gone through a midlife crisis, but I've I've sat there and thought about that, like how I made the right choices, am I doing the right things, and all type of jazz. And I think everybody does that once you get to a certain point in your life in general. And I think it kind of happens several times, and then it's probably that one big one at your midlife point or whatever. And I'm hoping I'm go to that point where I want like a sports car and stuff. I've never been a sports car person, but it was a guy I worked with who said he never was one either and all that jazz. But he just he wanted one once he got to like that age and stuff. And it just seems I don't know. Seems sad. I guess if that's where you find your youth at, it's inside like a fast car or like a motorcycle or something like that. It is what it is. If that's what brings you joy, it is what it is. And maybe the reason why I seem sad is because they make it seem so sad from like shows and movies and stuff. Whenever they show like an older guy like in his 50s or 60s and he's going through like, you know, he's going to buy a leather jacket and he's buying a motorcycle at that age and he's trying to like, you know, relive his youth and stuff. They always make it seem so sad. Um, even though it's like a natural stage in life, it seems depressing. 
I think it's the same way they portray when women go through menopause and all that kind of stuff. They make it like this such a like sad thing, even though it's something that's gonna happen. And maybe they have to portray it that way because it is a tough deal for people to go through it's such an, an emotional like roller coaster, I guess. So they portray it that way, but I don't know. I'm hoping it doesn't hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> it does with almost every character on tv whenever they go through these things man god bless them but butler was a perfect representation of like that person who seems like they have everything perfect in their life and they have all the perfect connections they have the perfect family they have the perfect career they have the perfect everything and especially when like you mean them just in that moment or you see them through like a the, the lens of social media that really kind of really pushes and drives that that crisis you're going through like if I, am i doing everything right should I have taken these opportunities? Should I be traveling more? Did I do this right? Am I doing this right? And it kind of sends you through like these little micro crises is all. Like, I know this, that's probably not even a, the right term of it, but that's all I can think of where it's not necessarily just one big crisis. And I know this is how to kind of frame a lot of stuff, but I just hope I never go to those major bad ones. Like when you would get to that midlife and you're going out and you're like, I'm trading in my Prius for a Corvette. Like I never want that to happen. But man, yeah, this was very entertaining. I enjoyed this a lot. More people should be like Cat and just embrace. Like this is who I am. I'm proud of who I am. I'm happy with all the decisions I made. It is what it is, but without being so self-centered. <laughs> like, I'm the shit. Why would I care? <laughs> and I made every right decision. Man, but definitely, this is some good stuff, man. That dude, the universe definitely sounded like a generic, like, Morgan Freeman or something to me. But maybe it was just me, but he did. Oh, man. But yeah, man, this is good stuff. Hopefully, you guys have a fantastic day. Hopefully, you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. I'll see you in the next one. Later.